What is going on guys? Thanks for tuning back in the channel and on today's episode we're going to be working on this 1998 Ski-Doo Formula Z 670 and we're going to be performing a redneck top end rebuild. Now the story behind this, you can see this piston is scored there a little bit up front here on the exhaust port side it's scored pretty bad and uh, it's also melted just a little bit. As you can see it, the top part there is a little bit, a little bit deformed and your rings are kind of seized up in there so something was messed up in that um and the rumor is that this engine was rebuilt um and the your previous owner which we know well got it off of ebay and uh apparently it obviously was not rebuilt properly and i could tell it's definitely been rebuilt the cylinders had a cross hatch in them and all that from the honing um but it was not done Obviously something was messed up here because this engine only has like 20 miles on it and it already blew up. So uh, this left us stranded in a field. It was doing about three quarter throttle, kind of just bogged a little bit and just died. So I thought it was the plugs originally, switch plugs, nothing, made sure the kill switches were up, nothing, had good spark and all, um, still nothing. And uh, brought her home. We towed it all the way back with the MXZ 500 back there, towed it like a champ. Um, we had to bring it through a creek, did get stuck there, but... Once we got it out of there, it towed it like pretty good. Um, and uh, so, yeah, when we got it back, gave it a shot of ether just, you know, just to make sure that it would run right and uh, nothing. Would not even fire, so tore it apart. And uh, this is our issue right here, obviously. So, I can feel this pulling just a little bit weird, and this would be why. So, we're going to be doing a redneck top end rebuild on this. And the reason I say redneck and not just a top end rebuild is this is not exactly the proper way to do it. Um, some of the ski do purists and two stroke purists would not be happy, but this is what we got to do because the snow is out there. And the way shipping is nowadays for a set of top end pistons, uh, it probably will be here and the snow will be gone. So uh, I'll show you guys what I got to do a redneck top end rebuild on this. First off, we have a parts 670 in our basement um, that actually blew up one side of this um, one side of the engine and the other side was fine and the side that was fine is the parts that are going to be loading to fix this engine so this is a good cylinder jug off of it um, it's been sitting a little bit that's why it has a little bit of surface rust on there but we'll probably clean that up before we put it on just to make sure nice and seals nice but you run your finger down it um, and fingernail you cannot feel any uh, issues there in the cylinder and we got ourselves a wrist pin and bearing there um i sprayed this down with wd-40 just to make it slide nice and everything it works fine so we'll see which one i want to use if i want to use this one or the other one that's in there um and got ourselves a used piston that came out of the cylinder bore so that should be fine and uh these rings move freely and everything and the piston uh does not really appear to have any damage on it just normal wear and tear and then to top it off, we got ourselves a brand new Vertex uh, gasket kit with new O-rings and new cylinder jug uh, base gaskets there and exhaust gaskets. So that's why we're going to be doing a top end rebuild kit, or redneck top end rebuild. Um, this is not exactly the proper way to do it, but you know sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get the stuff up and running again. So that's what we got to do here. And uh, let's get to uh, tearing that one side down, getting the piston out, and uh, moving to putting our new piston in. Right before I forget, uh, I'll show you the old cylinder jug that the piston scored on. It's not super bad, but you can definitely see it's scored on. Um, so, that's not really reusable, I'd say. Um, you know, you take it to a machine shop, they could save it for sure. Get to tearing this piston out. First thing I'm going to do is take out that circlip so I can get the wrist pin out and uh, get that piston out and put it on the wall of shame.
So as you guys seen, I turned that piston out. Um, and I scraped the old gasket off, the old base gasket that was there. Um, there was what was left of it. And then I put the new one on. And I cleaned it up the surface there with uh, Scotch Brite and brake cleaner. Um, as you see, the gasket's obviously not right down because um, the cylinder jugs aren't on. But uh, now we're going to rotate the engine over, get this one uh, pretty much top dead center, and then uh, use some assembly lube, loop all the bearings back up, and throw that piston back, the uh, this piston um, in there. So let's get to that and then uh, see what happens next. the other piston back in completely got the other circlet back on on the uh, facing the clutch so that's all secured now everything uh, moves right and I got the rings gapped up properly uh, so now all we got to do is put our cylinder jugs back on and I'm going to start by uh, putting the uh, PTO side one back on first and we'll throw the uh, the uh, mag side back on and then uh, put our wide pipe back on and then we'll torque the wide uh, the uh, jugs back down uh, the wide pipe will actually help align them first so let's get guys so back out here and uh, before we even bolt our cylinder jugs back on I'm gonna put our wide pipe back on and uh, we're gonna throw new gaskets in um, just because I have them and uh, take this one off and uh, put a new one in there um, you know because why not I have the gaskets so might as well so uh, let's get to put these wide pipe gaskets on here and uh, then tighten the wide pipe bolts down and then we can get to bolting our cylinder chugs down and uh, all right so I just got that uh, in the Y pipe on torqued all the bolts to spec uh, using my best judgment with my hand so they are all torqued to spec we don't have to even worry about those things coming loose uh, so now um, I'm gonna put this uh, coolant hose back on and also tighten that clamp down torque it to spec as well with my hand and 
And then we're gonna put the cylinder, put these bolts in the cylinder jugs. There's eight of them, and we might actually break out the torque wrench for that one. Uh, but uh, we will see. See how I'm feeling today. So, so I'll get this hose put on though, and then uh, get that thing torqued to spec, and we'll work on the cylinder jugs. All right, so putting the uh, bolts in the the jugs. Got two in so far out of the eight. Um, and I'm just putting it in with the half inch impact, just kind of driving it in, not really getting any uh, ogadogas in, just kind of driving them in there so that way I come in with the torque wrench and do the final tightening. Um, so, so I'm doing it with the half inch impact, so I'm not actually cranking down on them, just you know, getting them driven down in there, and then I'll come with the torque wrench and tighten them all. Uh, so they're all to spec and won't get any leaks there, so. <laughs> cylinder head here so got the thermostat and stuff in it so we're gonna put this on put our rings on first and uh, the bolt get torqued to 21 foot pounds uh, so as you can see that's gonna look really nice on there so let's get to putting the bolts in here and uh, first up the o-rings on so that way it seals and everything so let's get to it <laughs> So you can see you got the cylinder head all torqued up, uh, 21 foot pounds. And if you're doing this, you want to make sure you get the two shorter bolts uh, right here above the power valves or the rave valves. Um, now I'm gonna get the rave valve on this side because it's a different jug. Um, and we throw the exhaust on, throw some spark plugs on. Uh, we try to fire it and then throw some coolant in it because um, you know obviously you don't want to run it without coolant. So uh, we put that rave valve in there and. Uh, Get it in, so gonna put it in. <laughs>
Alright, so after spending way too much time trying to figure out how to get that ray valve back on, uh, it's been a while since I did it, uh, got it on finally, so now it's time to throw the exhaust on and then uh, put some plugs in and fill it with coolant, so let's get to it. Alright guys, so as you can see, we've got the piston added to the shelf of shame here. Uh, this is my shelf of shame. Um, I'm still working on I literally just uh, started working on this a little while ago, not too long ago. Um, so I got to find a bunch of parts to put on here like I have. Um, I have some old crankshafts that I tore off a chainsaw that was broken in half, stuff like that. Um, I actually have a video on tearing that chainsaw apart um, if you just want to look it up. It's the only chainsaw video on my channel, but uh, I was on the Pool and Pro. But anyway, I got to find that um, and a bunch of other pistons and head gaskets and stuff like that that are worthy of the shelf of shame. So pretty much right here, these are the two pistons out of my 86 LT gray. Obviously this one has a chunk out of it. This one, that one speaks for itself. You can see it's really badly scored. Uh, this is the matching cylinder chug. This is really scored as well. Then we just got some new old stock boxes for the pistons I put in it. Um, but those are going to be coming off because they are not shelf of shame worthy yet. Um, so right now we just got three pistons and a cylinder jug up here. But again, I got a lot more stuff that I can add on to it. I just got to... Uh, Look through it, and then this I just found in a lawnmower, so I just threw it up there. But uh, you know, probably just keep that up there. But you know, hey. Uh, and then right here, working on trim for the shelf of shame. This is actually just old barn wood, but uh, working um, as trim for the shelf of shame. This happened last night. Um, this was I blew a belt on the 2001 MXZ, and uh, it actually works out perfect. It's like the same length. Um, and I just thought it was unusual, it's the way it blew right here and then down here, and it's cracked everywhere. So, that belt was probably really old, and that's probably why I did that, but uh, works as great trim for the shelf of shame, in my opinion. So, anyway, let's get back to the video. Alright guys, so it is a couple days after, as you can tell, we've been out. Um, and uh, it seems to be now that the snow is sadly melting, it's like 42 degrees out, and tomorrow it's supposed to get into the 50s, and... It's just going to stay uh, medium 40 degrees, around, just around in 40s. So uh, um, I don't think the snow is going to really last. Um, it's going to get down decently cold in the night in 20s during nighttime. So we may, we'll may probably be able to get out tonight still, hopefully. Um, if it, It's supposed to really cool down here soon. So we should be able to get out tonight possibly and uh, take this thing out um, again. So... Uh, since I've redid the engine, you can see I got all the exhaust on and stuff like that. Everything's in, coolant's in. Um, and I wouldn't even call it a redid. I just uh, got, it, got it through the season because the plan is that this engine might be coming out this season. And we might we have a short block 670 in our basement. Um, it was a complete engine, but we pulled parts of it to put in this one. Um, so the plan is to take that short block. Um, it, it was used. Uh, it was actually the original engine out of this sled, as I already said. Um, but that one blew up, so they put this one in, and, uh, anyways, um, that's just a short block right now, so the plan is to take that to a machine shop and have them balance the cranks out, and then, uh, do probably a slight bore on the cylinders, I'm not too sure how much, or just get them done, redone, and, uh, and then we'll slap pistons and stuff like that in, and, uh, probably reuse this head, because this head is, uh, really good, as you've seen, um, but who knows, maybe get another head, um, I'm not too sure if it's gonna be if we're gonna it's gonna have a mild build on the engine or if it's just gonna be stock. So I'm not too sure. Um, so anyways, uh, we've put a hundred and fifty six point eight miles on it since the uh, freshen up there, and uh, that odometer was reset um, first time we took it out. So anyway, the engine has been running good. It's got good power, good acceleration. Uh, Good top end everything seems to be there um it runs good um had it up to 105 in the field and uh it was still climbing but uh we just ran out of room so um we could have just kept going but there was a pretty deep it was like a culvert so i mean if you go in there doing 105 and come back out you know it's like a ditch so you're just you're gonna be flying um and that's just not gonna feel too good if you're even gonna be able to hang on so you know, obviously you got to slow down there, um, but anyway, uh, it still had more in it, so maybe one day we'll top it out. Um, I hear guys can get this thing up to like 118 in prime conditions, but I'm not too sure. Um, but anyways, 
Uh, this thing is considerably faster than the MXZ 500. This is only a 500. Uh, we drag raced. Uh, my dad was on this. I was on that. He got out about. Uh, I got out um, about the 20 foot, and after 20 foot, it was just game over. This thing just totally passed me and ate it for dinner. Um, this thing pretty much it just launched out, and by the end of the race, it was like it was out on me probably maybe. 20 30 yards there um but i'm surprised the 500 did keep up good uh it definitely has the acceleration just not the same top end as this machine does um so the engine that ran pretty much flawlessly you get it four primes so that does have a primer and uh starts first pull all the time and it's definitely got the compression you can feel it um so the sled ran flawlessly the only issue we even had this weekend was we we're just about across the street coming back in and uh he said it felt like it was running on one cylinder again so we made it back and i was looking just giving a visual inspection i could tell that fuel was dripping down to the belly pan so i was looking around the fuel pump area and i just seen fuel just pouring out and the amount of fuel coming out i just thought it was maybe the main line coming out of the tank um there but i was looking at that that seemed all intact and i was just looking i was like my fuel pump's leaking already i can't imagine that so i pulled this carburetor off i pick it up and i can just see there's no drain plug on the bottom of the bowl so the drain plug you could literally see the main jet the drain plug for the fuel drain out of the bowl actually fell out and it was just sitting there on top of the fuel pump i thought it was gone but luckily it was still there so anyway uh i put the drain plug back in tightened it really good um and uh we haven't had any issues since um it's been about 100 miles put on it and no issues with that so anyway uh the sled is running good and i would call this a successful build and so that is all for this video thanks for watching guys and uh don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like uh and give us a comment see see if you've ever had or seen a bowl drain plug fall out of a carburetor before um i'd be curious to know i've never even seen that on a youtube video um so let me down in the comments and uh, see you later.